Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, my new book just came out uh, a few months ago. Uh, this is it here. Uh, Footprints in the Dust, the life of the Buddha from the most ancient sources. And um, uh, friends, when, when I told friends that I was writing a biography of the Buddha, they said, oh, well, there are already hundreds of them. Do we really need another one? And my answer is, uh, we could do with another one because I've read hundreds of lives of the Buddha and they're all pretty much the same. A small amount will be about the Buddha's life and 50%, 60% will be about his teachings. There's nothing wrong with that, but if it's the life of the Buddha, it should be about his life for the most part. And if you read the almost all, and certainly all the biographies of the Buddha I've ever read, they contain a few bits of information from the Pali Suttas, from the four Nikayas, and the rest is stories and legends that developed sometimes centuries after the Buddha. So what I've done here is I've restricted myself to just looking at the information in the four Nikayas and the Vinaya. And what, you, uh, what emerges if you just use that material is quite a different um, story of the Buddha, so quite a different biography, quite a different person emerges. I'll give you just one example of what I mean. So one of the iconic stories um, in the Buddha's biography is the four sights, the Chatu Nimitta. So supposedly King Suddhodana uh, restricted Prince Siddhartha's uh, life to a beautiful palace. But one day he managed to get out of the palace and with his charioteer he went through the streets of Kapilavastu and he saw an old man, a sick man, a corpse being taken for cremation and a wandering set ascetic and he'd never seen these things before. And when he asked what they were and what they meant, the charioteer uh, said to him, well, those things happen to everybody. And he was profoundly shocked. And it was this, this was the trigger that made him decide to renounce his family and search for the truth. And it's a great story, but it isn't in the Tripitaka. And I, I've mentioned this to people and they're really quite shocked because this is a pretty iconic story. And it's profoundly meaningful too, but it isn't in the Tripitaka. What is in the Tipitaka is a place where the Buddha says, I came to know of old age, sickness and death, etc., etc. So he talks about it as something that he'd heard about or experienced. Later storytellers have turned old age into an old man, sickness into a sick person, death into a corpse being taken from, for, for cremation. So. I'm just restricting myself to what's in the Tipitaka. And uh, what you find is uh, a very interesting character. The second thing is it's simply not possible to write a from birth to death narrative of the Buddha by using the information in the Pali Tipitaka. Because although we know a lot about what the Buddha said, we know quite a lot about where he said it. And we know uh, the, the incidents or the events that prompted him to say it. But for the most part, we have no idea when he said it. <laughs> okay, so we have a very little bit of information about the Buddha's childhood, youth, and early adulthood, but virtually nothing. Those who compiled the Tipitaka simply weren't interested in the Buddha's life before he became a wandering ascetic. It's only after that point that the Buddha tells us about how he went to two teachers, why he left his home, uh, the two teachers he studied with, his period of experimentation and his enlightenment. So we have a, a sequence of events there. And then in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, we have an account roughly of the Buddha's, the last four, uh, 12 months of the Buddha's life. But all the rest, the other 40, 44 years, we know of things that happened, but we have no idea when they happened. 
And so we can't really write a biography in the sense of his ancestry, when he was born, his youth, uh, his teenage years, his early adulthood, his marriage, etc. And then he met Devadatta and he did this and he did that. Now, we simply don't know when those things happened. So I haven't written uh, an account, um, a narrative account of the Buddha's life. From the Tipitika, you simply can't do that. So what I've done is I've gone through the, all over the suttas and picked out every piece of information that gives an idea of what the Buddha was like as a person. His habits, the way he spoke, how he conducted himself in public debates, uh, how he collected his food, the, the, the clothing he wore, and why he wore that particular type of clothing, how he, the similes he used, and so on. And all that information is usually in very small sound bites, if you like. Mm? And so each of them is really very, very small. But if you put them all together, it gives you quite a full and interesting and detailed account of what the Buddha was like as a person. And that's what the book is about.